Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to this week. Hello, everybody. It's been, oh my God, it's been one hell of a week. I haven't seen weeks like this ever. I mean, it's just, Rosanna, I mean, Trump in the hospital, out of the hospital, riding around in circles, infecting everybody. It's, it's a, a super spreader administration. I can't wait till November the 3rd. What do you think? I think uh, I think anybody who has come in contact or knows of anyone who has coronavirus is just shaking their head in disgust. In disgust. It's, I mean, everyone who has been affected by this, not just those who have died, but those whose family members have gotten it or as friends have gotten it, you know, or anything like that, knows how just ridiculous and how irresponsible and just careless. It, it is. It, it has dominated our lives for the past uh, six months now, seven months, um, without the well, coronavirus or Trump. Because I've been Trump well, here for like five years. <laughs> coronavirus because of Trump, right? No, we we don't. He says, don't let it dominate your life. But we haven't had a choice because of his policies. You know, we've been dealing with with it for, for, for seven months. Well, he just, yeah, waltzes around like it's no big deal. Claiming good morning, revolution, voice. everybody. I forgot to say good morning, revolution, I think. <laughs> Scott, uh, Anita, Michael, and you too, Rosanna. Good morning. Where's that poem? Uh, oh, yeah. That's right, I, I got to read that. I read it I, this morning. Uh, Michael and I, we read it together. Yeah. It's a wonderful poem wonderful poem so i'm gonna to try to embody it you know get it in my body so that i can present it i'll be thinking about changing the name of the show the good morning revolution if you think it's a good idea or a bad idea let us know in the chat you know and by the way scott we haven't asked people in a long time to host a watch party you know share yeah share the program click on the uh, with your friends the watch party and uh let folks know what uh, we're talking about. Uh, Anita. Yes. Ohio. What's going on? Is it still neck and neck? I well, mean, Biden is up a point at one point right now. Uh, that means he's behind. Kamala Harris is behind. Come on. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I, I think I think Kamala Harris has had a, a, a boost in, from the debate the other day. Uh, it's hmm. not the likely voters, at least her, her own personal approval rating went up way above Pence's. So, um, so I think, I think the, the next few weeks will, of course, we'll see what happens, but I think a lot of energy is going for the Biden campaign right now. Well, it's not hard for her uh, uh, approval rating to go up because Pence had a freaking fly on his head, you know? Yeah. You know what they say, you know, if you if you were manure, you wouldn't attract flies. Well, he attracted flies. That's right. And um, the Biden campaign came out with the fly swatter uh, that says truth over flies. So. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. Michael, he called Kamala Harris a communist Trump, <laughs> not by, uh, not uh, Mr. Pence, called Mrs. Harris, uh, or Ms. Harris. I'm not sure, Anita, you'll correct me because you always correct me on that tip. <laughs> a senator, you say. Senator Harris was called by Trump a communist and a monster. What do you think of that? I think only red baiters take the bait. Hmm. You know, that, that's what they have to go to, you know, whether we agree or disagree with, um, you know, some of Senator Harris's policies. The truth of the matter is that she stood up there and stated factual evidence about many of the problems we're facing as a nation when it comes to how many dead, why they've died, you know, as, as Scott was saying, as a result of the, the failed policies of the Trump administration. So uh, she even commented on the Black Lives Matter protests and everything was met with, you know, some kind of conspiracy theory. You know, they're always insisting that it's the communist, the violent uh, radical left. And then a few days later, right, or I think just two days, one day or two days later, some right wing terrorists, you know, it, it, they tried to kidnap the um, uh, a Michigan governor. Um, you know, and this is something they've been planning since June, according to the FBI report. So yeah, well, these boys, they were, they were, they were at the uh, Michigan State House marching on the, after Trump called on liberate. them to liberate it. Uh, Scott 
Antonio Gramsci said uh, uh, that this is the time of monsters. Well, we're, we're certainly seeing that. I mean, what I, I want to go back a little bit to, to what to Trump's attack on, on Senator Harris. Um, this is not uh, by any means the first time. A week or two ago, uh, he was giving a speech and he talked about the possibility of her becoming president um, if something happened to Joe Biden. And he said, um, it can't happen that way. She'd come to the presidency through the back door, you know, which he would not have said um, about a, a, a white um, male vice president, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, and he this this idea that it would somehow be illegitimate for this woman who's been who's been in public office for thirty years mm -hmm. to uh, ascend to the presidency um, was horrifying. And if you compare that to his path to the presidency, he's talking about throwing out the popular vote, having Republican legislatures um, directly appoint Trump's electors to the Electoral College. He's telling his thugs to get out and intimidate people at the polls. He's doing everything he can to disrupt the election. And, and yet he's saying that, you know, Kamala Harris is the one who would end up in the, in the White House by the back door. It, it was infuriating. So the next thing you know, he's going to tell her to go back to her country, Robosana. I mean, you know, um, and, and he needs to go back from under the rock that he crawled from under. I mean, this guy is just such a, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's scary. Um, but, Rosanna, it looks like the Democratic forces are up in the polls, 10, 11 points. And uh, so are you a little bit more confident about what's going to happen on Election Day? Uh, slightly, but I I'm <laughs> still I'm I'm still waiting for something. Maybe I don't know. It's just it, you know this year has been well, this presidency first of all, and the candidacy before that has been just so crazy. Mm. But uh, I you know I I think I think what it is showing us. I just saw this morning that seven million people have already voted. Mm. So, and uh, California is just now starting to vote. Uh, Arturo and I are casting our ballots today. You can be sure we'll be taking our picture and sending it off, you know, another vote for against fascism. So, um, but at 7 million people before, you know, it's 26 days before the election, 25 days before the election. It's hopeful, it's hopeful. Mm -hmm. Speaking of pictures, you want everybody to take a picture, a photo of yourself saying hashtag vote against fascism. Now our comrade B. Lumpkin, Anita, mm -hmm. went viral the other day. Oh, she was really? on Good Morning America, oh, what? she was on AP, she was on um, CNN. On CNN. Oh my God, I, mean, oh, I, didn't see well, that. I don't have TV, that's how I missed it. But Great, that's wonderful for B. And I saw the little clip of her that the Steelworkers uh, Retiree Group put together. She's just a, a dynamic inspiration to us all. Absolutely. So you don't have a TV. You remind me of my father. My father <laughs> didn't have a. <laughs> so we we, 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 were, we were mad at my dad. Oh my, oh my goodness. But Anita. Yes. Colin. Kamala Harris, a communist and a monster. I, I mean, know, I know. Harris well, and, is as much a she's as much a communist as Trump is a Republican uh, or a well, Democrat. Yeah, she's she's just not a, nothing about her is is uh, affiliated with the Communist Party. And of course, she um they uh they're raising the anti-communist uh you know card every step of the way, including against the opponent that John Ossoff is running against in, in Georgia. That That's they right. raised up anti-communism <clears throat> against him too. And, and in Ohio here, Sherrod Brown is routinely uh, called a communist. And, and I know uh, we've always had to do some uh, fact checking there and just assure people that he is not a communist. So, um, you know, we, of course the communist party does not endorse candidates unless they're our candidates. So. Um, it's just a lot of uh, lies, but the anti-communism, I don't think, I don't think that will survive another generation. I think the young people see right through that um, as, you know, what it is, which is a word. Well, if it was, it would be a compliment if you were called that, you know, as, uh, 
the wonderful article that Rosanna wrote uh, uh, some time ago uh, that uh, Michael uses as a recruiting tool. Um, and uh, but I, I do think that uh, we have to um, understand that the red baiting that's taking place now is not just taking, it's part of the Republican plan to discriminate against people coming from any countries that they consider not favorable, that is not white, Northern European, or Anglo-Saxon Protestant. The State Department issued new, quote unquote, new directives that were actually old directives against uh, communists coming to this country. But at the same time, they're prohibiting Mexicans and people from Muslims from uh, the Middle East and uh, so on and so forth. It's part of a general policy of tightening up on people of color and perceived political opponents by this administration. And which... so also it's against universities. They're, they're blocking a lot of Chinese students from coming back to their, they're in the middle of their educations and they're blocking them from coming back uh, because wow. they had some, you you know, some very uh, disconnected connection with something military in China. So you see, this is this, this administration is, is on its way out, Scott. And uh, you know, I don't really see the point of this foolishness. The the anti communism though is, is something that you know the the whole look all of society has to start kind of fighting against it because there are a lot of people um, on the, you know, in the center, even vaguely, you know, on the left who, who buy into um, a lot of that stuff, especially, um, you know, the more liberal forces in the ruling class. If you look at the history of this country, one of the ways that the extreme right was able to kind of um, survive and, and build itself up to the point where it is now is by anti-communism. All through the Cold War, the, the, the hardest, loudest anti-communists were actually fascists and, and neo-confederates. And um, because they were able to cover it in that, in that anti-communism, that, that Cold War era mentality, that, you know, that opened a, a space for them to come back into the, you know, into the political mainstream. So I, we have to say that, that anti-communism works, you know, hand in hand with, with white supremacy um, to secure the power of the extreme right. And it, well, if Trump was such an anti-communist over Rosanna, why did he go to Walter Reed Hospital? Public hospital, government funded, all the way, best, you know, great doctors. Um, and now he's walking around saying he's virus free. If he was such a he should have gone to a private hospital and stayed out of Walter Reed. Am I right, right or wrong? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, he's, well, you know, he's just a ball of com contradictions and just outright lies. And people need to really like see that for, you know, and just step away a little bit and just see that for what it really is. And otherwise, you know, we, we were in for the hell of our lives, I guess. I don't know what that expression is, but. We're in for the, a hell of a time in our lives. I agree That's with you right. 100%. But speaking of China, Michael, there's going to be a webinar on China coming up. What day is that? On the October 18th, 18th is it? Sunday. What time? Noon, uh, Eastern. Noon. And who is the, uh, the featured speaker is uh, Vijay Prashad, the great Marxist public intellectual. And he's going to be talking about China. You know, we, so we, we, we in this country know so little about China. So little about China. You know, one third of humanity, we, almost, we know almost nothing. They have great scientists, great engineers, great dancers, great philosophers, great writers. Like how many of you have heard of Mo Yan? Mo Yan won the, Pula, the, the Nobel Prize in Literature. Every single one, the majority, did anybody raise their hand? No. He, 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 all of his books are published in English. Hmm. 
Look him up in the library. We don't even, never even heard of him. We heard about Hemingway, right? We heard about um, who Faulkner, right? We, we, we know about, um, we even know about Pablo Neruda, as great as he is, but he's from Chile. But China, we, we never even heard of. Uh, so, you know, before we start waxing on things happening in that great country, we should find out a little bit more, you know, about no. what's going on, it seems to me. Yes. I think it's also important to point out that in China, they had, I believe, a little over uh, 3,000, 3,500 people that passed away with this virus. Hmm. I, live in, I live in the city of Los Angeles. And in this county alone, we, we've had uh, 50, I'm sorry, I should have looked it up, but it's, it's like double the amount of people that have died. Now China has right. mm -hmm. a billion plus people. And uh, to me, I just keep remembering that they have a billion people and they have had less deaths than in our county with, uh, I think it's 10 million people that we have here. In LA County. You know, and we're you still know, a hotspot. It... Come again? We're still a hot spot here. Well, we wish LA the best. And yeah. even in, I saw, I, I posted a statistic the other day that there are more cases in the White House mm -hmm. <laughs> than there are in the whole country of Cuba. <laughs> Get out of town. Can you imagine? When your heart well, has to break. This is in the goddamn White House and in the whole country of Cuba. How could that be? And your heart has to break for some of the people. Like, I remember I was watching the president leave the hospital and he got in the helicopter. And, you know, you just think of the people who are driving him around and being close to him. I know they try to keep their distance, of course. But the first thing he did when he got to the White House was take his mask off to do a, you know, an interview. And so imagine, you know, just politics aside, you know, the humanity and knowing that your relatives going there to work with the president every day. It's just, it's disrespectful. We all know someone, all of us on this call right now, we all know someone who has died. And so for the president of the United States and his administration not be taking this seriously when they're sick, when they're sick, right? It's just, it's an embarrassment. It's, it's, it's yeah. beneath common decency. It's criminal. It's criminal. And then, okay. and, and then the people who are allowing him to do it, from his family uh, to his doctors to his inner clique to I mean all y'all are just irresponsible. You need to have your heads examined. And it shows also just one of the the underlying features of capitalism is that you know in 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 the beginning when capitalism was first starting to to knit together the people who were sort of theorizing it were saying oh. Capitalism is great because the people who take the risk will also be able to make a profit from taking, you, you invest your money and you make a profit and that's, you get rewarded for that risk. But um, what we're seeing now, what we've seen throughout the history of capitalism is that the risk gets distributed always downward onto the most vulnerable, onto the workers, onto the poor, onto uh, racially and nationally oppressed people. Um, the risk, the, 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 the ruling class never bears even its fair share of the risk, let alone enough to be justified in profiting. And, and this is a, a beautiful example, a horrible, but a very fitting example of that kind of endless, savage redistribution of risk onto the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the biggest risk now is, to, is the risk to democracy, that this unhinged, outlawish, uh, administration has, but Ohio is going to uh, uh, bring us home, Anita. Absolutely. On, on November the third, I, I I don't want to see no more polls saying it's fifty fifty, and your home state of fifty one uh, forty nine right now. So fifty one. That's not a. And Sherrod Brown is confident that will that Biden will take Ohio. So good. I, well, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Thank um, you. We're going to call a meeting and. Mahoning and Trumbull County, um, and to get out the vote. And and Scott, Pennsylvania, your home boy, uh, your beer also, buddy. I'm seeing more Biden signs in my town right now 
uh, in my area than I've ever seen for a Democratic candidate. Um, you live in a Republican area. I live in, I live in a, a place where in, in 2018, or 2016 rather, um, so 75% of the population voted or voters voted and about 78% of them, I think, voted for Trump. So heavily, heavily Republican, but they're like, people are coming out now and, and I think it, part of it was when people- There's a moral imperative here, Scott, because of the race issue, don't you think? I mean, you saw that piece that, uh, that Joel Wendland wrote uh, mm -hmm. for CPUSA.org mm -hmm. on white supremacy. I mean, you can't continue to vote for Trump and call yourself a, a uh, anti-racist person. And that's something that we, uh, didn't, didn't Gus Hall, whose who's, uh, 110th birthday was yesterday, right? Um, Gus happy Hall, birthday, Gus. Gus, happy uh, birthday. Gus Hall developed the, the idea of the, the anti-racist majority, right? That, that in their majority, the American people um, do not support racism. They do not like racism. They don't support fascism. Um, they may not be organized effectively to fight it. They may not, you know, be on the front lines against it, but um, they're the idea that you know the American people as a whole, or some some vast majority of them, are um, you know, no, oh, you know, yeah, but Trump has a solid forty percent, and it's not moving. And so the question is, you know, you can't, you got to, we got to grab a hold to this issue, and 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 people who are still supporting him, it's kind of difficult to say that you know you're you that you hold equality high. I think we should be in more to this issue next week because we've been going for 25 minutes. Agreed? We're going to debate it next week. We Scott, have to make sure we, we talk about voter intimidation and propaganda against uh, you know, uh, a Biden from the Trump campaign, I, I think, next time. And what we're going to do to defend the democracy, yes. defend the vote, right. and not be provoked Right. Not be provoked by these ex extremists uh, on election day and uh, and after. Well, that does it. Uh, good morning, revolution. Good day, revolution. Uh, we'll see you next week, same time, same station. Stay safe. Uh, stay strong. Stay physically distant and socially, socialistically close. Bye, y'all. Uh, Bye. All right.